Hello everybody, welcome to Apex Racing TV. It's the BSR Formula Renault Series here on iRacing Live from the Suzuka Circuit in Japan. Andrew Woodhouse alongside Adam Bath, iRacing World Championship driver Alex Simpson. And Alex, I'll bring you in first because I know that this is probably your favourite circuit out there. You've had fantastic finishes in the World Championship Series here. What does it have in store for these drivers tonight? Yeah, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Um, yeah, what a fantastic circuit Suzuka is. Absolute driver circuit. Got everything you really want there. Some you know, high-speed corners, some fast-flowing corners where you have to really think about the line. Some tight, twisty corners. Hairpin, one of the best and most uh, infamous uh, chicanes in history. Um, yeah, fantastic. And I think we'll have some great racing tonight as well. Just, um, you know, 18 cars are on the grill. On the grill? Wow, I wish. <laughs> yeah, somebody's hungry. <laughs> yeah, get a little Barbie um, on the <laughs> grid. But um, yeah, I think um, actually looking at the qualifying times, it looks like there's quite a good pack that's going to be fighting up the front, and then in the middle, it's going to be very, very close as well. So I think we're going to have um, going to be jumping around on the cameras tonight. Yeah, and Adam Bath, this is a circuit with so much history, and um, one of the most challenging out there on the calendar. Yeah, just put, pick a year really in recent Formula One, and uh, there's got a whole load of. Uh, stories behind it, of course, uh, 12 years ago now, that epic fight back through the field by Kimi Raikkonen uh, in the 2005 race, and of course back in the late 80s, early 90s, the rivalry between Senna and Prost that boiled over here at Sky Track with such great history, and the Formula Renaults are going to etch that bit, uh, their bit of history into this track in the next uh, four races, races 49, 50, 51 and 52 coming up today, of course. Yes, and um, well, it's been a, a fun season so far, and it's been one that's been dominated by uh, mainly Martin Van Lusenord because he has taken many, many wins already this season. I'm not exactly sure of how many it is, but um, the Dutchman's really showed fantastic form, Adam. Yeah, he has, and last week he was uh, duking it out of his old pal Graham Carroll, who isn't here today, living it up in Monte Carlo, Graham Carroll, and... Um, uh, yeah, Martin Van Newton, not despite the amount of wins that he's taken to his name this season, isn't really sitting at the top in the championship, is he? He's sitting in fourth, good 300 points behind Pete Berryman. However, Martin Van Newton uh, sniffs an opportunity to get a win. He usually goes and gets it, and I think we're going to see the same here today. Yeah, and um, hey. I, I, th I, think you're, uh, I think you're right on that one, Adam. Uh, Alex being in Monaco, that's no excuse for not racing, is it? No, exactly. He's got perfectly good rig there now. <laughs> So, Martin Van Lusenod is the man with the pace in qualifying so far. Um, we'll see if there are still drivers out there. The checkered flag has just come out. Van Lusenod, I believe, did get across before that was flying. So, may still be on a fast lap here. Who else is out there? Dave Baker's coming up to the Casio Triangle. He looks like he's pushing. While we're on the uh, final laps of qualifying, um, Adam, I wonder if you can just give us a quick run through of like the top 10 in the uh, championships. Hey, sure, yeah, Pete Berryman leads the way ahead of David Baker, who's just pulled into the pit lane now, so no final lap for him. He's going to be starting in fifth at best. Keefley in third position for Faker in Sport Europe. Then it's Martin Van Lusen in fourth, the pace setter in qualifying at the moment. Paul Denton, highest of the AMs in fifth. Uh, Christian Rose in sixth. Then it's Jos Honig, seventh. Samuel LeBaire in eighth, leapfrogging Stephen Baxter, who's in ninth. And top te Tom Depker rounding up the top ten. Overall, in the AM standings, it's Paul Denton leading Christian Rose by 62 points. And then Jos Honig in third, Stephen Baxter in fourth, both Baker Simsport Europe drivers. Then we've got the trio of Apex Racing Academy drivers, Tom Depka fifth, Josh Thompson sixth, and Jack Godfrey in seventh. And then Kip Stevens in eighth for Pro Sim, ninth, Ralph Cullinan. And tenth, it is John McCutcheonson. And a brief overview of the team standings, Apex Racing UK, 169 points ahead of... Faker Sim Sport Europe, you'd, th you'd think it'd be more, wouldn't you? And Apex Racing Academy, uh, 800 points behind in third with CQR Club in fourth. It's been the fact that they have spent a fair portion of the season crashing into each other, I believe, and uh, why, uh, yeah, they're not as far in front as maybe the pace dictates. Well, they're, down, they're down to two at the moment as well, aren't they? So they're leaking Boom. points every race at the moment. So, yeah, until uh, Oscar's back from... Um, I think uh, Osp goes back next month or the end of next month, something like that. So they're going to miss four races with them. So desperate Don't. to get another driver in there, um, that's for sure. Uh, Pete Berryman and, yeah, Pete, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll go for the grid. Yeah, Pete Berryman and Samuel LeBaire, the two Apex UK drivers that was, on the that grid. That was nicely dodged, but I was going to say, do you fancy driving in that class? <laughs> well, <laughs> I do I do have the wheel with me here now, so uh, <laughs> I am available on demand. Um, I can't say I'm going to be any good, but um, yeah. Well, there we I'd, go, Alex, if we get... Yeah, if you get desperate. No, get him in. Get, it, get him in, get the points in. Get some points. Fast, fast track, yeah. Um, I'll, like I say, what Charlie Cox and Steve Parrish used to say on the MotoGP races was quick, we'll jump on the scooter, we'll go around and get some points. I think we could do that as well. I wonder if you the grid then for the first race of the day. Martin Van Lusenod starting on the pole position. Um, don't need to underestimate his credentials. Jack Keefley starting in second. Uh, third is Samuel LeBaire. Fourth, Josh Thompson. Then it's David Baker in fifth. Chembol at Bassey in sixth position. Uh, Paul Denton, 7th, 8th, John Godfrey, 9th, John McCutchinson, and Andreas Mortensen rounding out the top 10. 11th for Christian Rose, 12th, Tom Depka, 13th for Jos Honig, 14th, Stephen Baxter, Wolf of Verke, 15th, 16th is Pete Berryman, the championship leader, didn't set a time in qualifying, George Lee Wright in 17th, and Kip Stevens rounding out the 18 car field for this first race. And yeah. What we didn't see was Pete actually got tagged while he was checking up for to start his hot lap. The field was a bit close and I think one of the uh, Faker Sim Sport guys didn't see what was happening and uh, yeah, caught the back of Pete. So the oh, rule so stipulates penalty, you're not then. allowed a reset. So um, yeah, that affected uh, Pete's uh, qualifying. So got a lot of work to do from the back. I assume that was a penalty. Okay, well, that's fine. Uh, it does open the door for Van Lusenort, and we'll see whether he can uh, whether he can walk through it. Jack Keithley very quick, but I'm not sure we've seen from Keithley the pace to uh, to really challenge for the win this season but we'll see what he can do from uh, second place on the grid um drivers forming up and we are almost ready for that there's just a couple of drivers i think just still hanging around waiting on jack keithley Jos honig and kip stevens uh, to get this show on the road 30 seconds of gridding time remaining well very very quickly then in that case um I will just point out that we will be holding a charity race in in two and a half weeks' time, Friday the 12th of May, um, or Billy Munger. So more details of that to come later on. But now the red lights are on here at Suzuka. Green, green, green. And the green light is on. It's a good start by Van Lusenor, but a better one from Keith. He's already into the slipstream. The Apex Racing Academy car, but it looks like Van Lusenor the second phase was good, and he's up into the lead. Good start from David Baker as well, already gained a spot. Yeah, up to fourth position. Oh, it's getting quite tight in the midfield there. Look at that. Look how much it's checked up from sort of Paul Denton in seventh backwards. Very, very close here. The driver's doing well to, oh, to stay out of each other's way. Oh, that's uh, side by side there. That's Andreas Mortensen versus uh, Christian Rose. Rose has now got on the outside line and maybe running out of grip in the early stages. He's now under pressure from Tom Depka. Yeah, Depka going around the outside. He also got um, Perryman in. <laughs> Excuse me, Perryman in there. He's made a good start into the Degna curves. Oh, no. oh, was it, oh was it well, that's him. And that's Perryman gone. Yes, yeah, so the commentator right there. And we had the blown engine for uh for uh the kia last week and we've just had it there with the crash with pete berryman was it depka that was the spinner yes it, it was. was yeah depka lost it just, just on his got... own. nothing just a oh. unfortunate mistake it um, was through the first part alex the first part of degna oh. he, he might have hit, hit the curb too hard just sends the car sideways yeah and then he couldn't recover it yeah and poor pete caught in it just goes to show what bad qualifying's cost him um you know a, a complete yeah. race there so won't finish this one. And that wasn't his fault either, the qualifying. So <laughs> it's, it's all going from bad to worse for him. He, he might have an extra sort of 15, 20 minutes or so of um, to relax maybe before the next race if he can. And he done Samuel Libert on Josh Thompson, on Josh Ke uh, Keithley, sorry, inside into the Casio triangle, defending his position from Libert. Over the line then, 1.4 second lead for Martin Van Lusenort. He looks uh, relatively worry-free And what are our 15-minute races now. Uh, time to not lapse anymore. And, and Chambal at Bassi going through on David Baker on the outside. In the slipstream off of Thompson. And the bear through as well. Side by side. Baker's got, got the line. Bullet Bassi's going to have to go around the outside. Baker's still there. He's going to counter for CQR. And he can't 
hold off uh, Bolik Wasi for long. So the World Championship driver is through. And to fifth then, a position gained for him. David Baker back down to sixth. Uh, George Lee Wright and Jos Honig are having an exchange of positions. Going through the S's, that looks like Lee Wright passed Honig now and Lee Wright up to 13th position. Quite a few positions gained already. Yeah, mostly through other people's misfortune though. However, Verke is in 15th place. Tom Depp is still running with damage. I think Berryman's car was toast, as the, um, as the spotter would say. But he retired straight away. Van Luzenor from the Bear. Uh, well, the Bear's gone through very quickly. Casely into third. Fourth is Thompson. Fifth is Bollockbassi. And then Baker in his customary sixth position. Then Paul Denton, John Godfrey, McCutchinson, Rose, Mortensen, Baxter, Wright, Honig, Faverke, and Depka. There you go. It's not often we can go through the whole field in one breath, is it? No, uh, try doing that on Thursday nights. Uh, <laughs> you would need you would need a hospital. Or or a morgue. Um, I think yeah, I think we'd be picking you up off the floor, I think we would be definitely. At least. Uh, but Van Lusenau, well, Going along very, very nicely indeed. One point, what, one point six seconds, I think, ahead of Samuel Lubert. Lubert will try and give it his all to try and close him down. However, yeah, that opening few, uh, that opening two laps for Martin Van Luzenol has really uh, got the gap established. Over the line we go, 155.299 for Lubert. Wasn't too far off, uh, Martin Van Luzenol. And I think um, Jos Honig might have just had a quick issue. Uh, it was at the Casio Ooh. Triangle. Uh, he just had a half spin. Uh, doesn't yeah. lo he lost one position to Roy Verke, but he's got back going again. He's now in 15. Yeah, and um, I just I was doing an hour because David Baker was right behind Jim Bolabasi, and he pulled out the slipstream just in time for turn one. But Alex, you've really got to be alongside fully to make any sort of move into the first corner here. Yeah, really. I think um, otherwise the uh, you know the driver will just uh, squeeze you in there, so you end up. Uh, Getting in a bit of a wreck, so you have to be careful. You end up getting, uh, you end up getting the centre and cross treatment, of course. <laughs> yeah. In, into that very corner, and uh, yeah, one thing that Dave Baker was eager to avoid there, and I'm sure Chamber Bolabasi was as well. Um, Chamber Bolabasi, of course, just signed for Core Motorsports. I get those two confused. Is it Core Motorsports or Core Sim Racing? It's just two, isn't it? Uh, yeah, there is indeed. And um, again, we front switch. I do apologise. Yeah, sim racing is um, is uh, what Jim is. Because so. we met all those boys, and and every it seemed, uh, uh, last year in Germany, and it seemed like um, we didn't meet any of these there. Although we did, um, we met um, Isaac, um, but he wasn't core at the time. Um, oh. But yeah, so it's oh, well, the um, it's the core motorsport lads that we met. Okay, that's what I was on about. We yeah, did, yeah, every yeah. second person that was core. <laughs> yeah. <that. laughs> This is, this is the problem. Yeah, it'll get your brain going, that's for sure. It will. It will indeed. Uh, let's have a look. What's the closest battle there on the circuit at the moment? Probably this one here. Between John Godfrey, John McCutchinson, Christian Rhodes and Andreas Mortensen. Well, a bit close. Problems for um, George, George as well. That another spin at the Casio Triangle, indeed it was, almost identical to Jos Honig, but how did it come about? So he lost the rear on entry. Well, that was um, unfortunate, shall we say. Now he's down to 15th place, he doesn't have to worry too much about being the last car. Tom Depka is uh, still limping around with quite a damaged car. We're about to get to the halfway oh, mark in the race. Oh, off again at the first corner, I don't know what's happened to him. Yeah, struggling away there quite massively. So, separation starting to happen now as well. Um, Josh Thompson is also running a uh, one off livery as well um, just to, uh, to support Billy after that accident. So, I'll well, certainly give Billy all the best of um, best wishes, of course. So hopefully, we see him back on the track very, very soon. Like I said, there is a charity race that is planned for. Uh, Friday the 12th of May and that will be here on Apex Racing TV mixed class race between the uh, the Porsche 911 and the Kia Optima that's going to be balanced out that Adam so that could be interesting yeah, could be the, they're going to be at the same pace eventually 
Yeah, we're going to see that the two cars that make up our BSR TC racing are on the same track at the same time. Uh, there has been an overtake. Uh, it's because of what? John McCutcheonson's Where? mistake. <laughs> overtake Claxton. Uh, yeah, John McCutcheonson made a slight mistake on the exit of the hairpin at the back. Oh. Uh, Christian Rose through, so that's Rose up into ninth place. We didn't get a lot of that, Adam, I'm afraid. As, um, there's some interference there, but McCutcheonson trying to go down the inside. Rose is late on the brakes. And Mortensen is trying to take advantage, Alex, but you can't really do that there. Someone's late on the brakes into the Casio chicane. It's really one line all the way through. Pretty much, yeah, unless you're fairly, again, committed and alongside, very, very difficult to do. Mortensen right in the slipstream now. Uh, well, he's looking the most likely out of anybody out there, Adam, at the minute. Yeah, this midfield scrap definitely seems to be the liveliest uh, that we've got in the entire field. McCutcheon is trying his best to hold back Andreas Mortensen. Hasn't had the best race so far. Lost the position away from the start. Uh, one of those positions to Christian Rose. And uh, John McCutcheon, the pro sim driver, trying his best to hold him back. He's only got six and a half minutes to do so. So uh, we're into the second half of the race now. So he can try and consolidate uh, that spot inside the top ten. There is about yep. to be a battle. Sorry, Alex. I think you were about to say the same thing. Yeah, Jem closing in on uh, Josh Thompson as well. There he oh, goes. and uh, Godfrey, Godfrey around. Quick, uh, quick 360, and he'll resume. But he did lose a whole bunch of places to that pack that we were watching just before we cut to uh, Jim. Telekinesis is a requirement to be a commentator in Apex Racing TV, Alex. <laughs> so, yeah. That's it. As, yeah, uh, last time by, three tenths of a second quicker, Jem was. So. Closing in steadily. Um, yeah, Thompson's driving well out there. There wasn't his fourth place. It's nice and solid. No mistakes so far. He's not that far behind Keithley, really, is he? So. No, just the 1.5. A little mistake from Keithley, and he'll be in, um, in, you know, a whole load of bother. So, comes Chen then into 130R. Could the Casio triangle be an opportunity? I think it will. He'll have to go around the outside though, because ah, yes, and he has. <laughs> that's yeah. very good. That's yeah, very beautiful. Good. Very, very good move that as well. So fully committed to it, late on the brakes around. He overshot the corner a bit just to make sure that he was at least alongside and that stopped Josh getting the uh, the cut back or covering the line off. So good, good driving from him. And then a little weave down the straight to try and break the draft as well. I don't uh, know about you, I expected that to be a lot more difficult than he made that look. That was excellent. He got and a good run though, didn't he? That was the yeah. thing. I think he carried the speed and the, the momentum into the corner. So a Very good run that. through 130, yeah. It's always tricky through there as well because sometimes you can just push a little bit wide and you know especially when you're in that draft so, as well you um, can't always see you can't always yep. see the apex when you're following someone either into 130 hour i mean we know that well from years of racing all, all these different categories here then um very very difficult corner there's a reason adam why that is one of the most feared corners in formula one even when it's just a even though it's a, just a bit of a flat out kink these days yeah slightly different of course to what it was like back in uh, the late 90s wasn't it they changed it after Alan McNish had his huge incident in his Toyota but uh, yeah still one of the most revered corners in oh. uh, not just Formula 1 the world of motorsport and it sets it, it sets you up brilliantly for the, the final chicane a great overtaking place that one of the best we see and Andreas Mortensen maybe utilising that overtaking place uh, very very soon because he's right with McCutchinson he got a much better first sector but McCutchinson was strong through Degner and in through the, uh, the hairpin got a good exit so we'll see into Spoon what sort of run he gets out of here. Spoon's one of those corners, Alex, that is great when you're driving well, but when somebody's catching you, it always feels like you're on the back foot through there. Yeah, and it's uh, just that off camber that comes when you come off Spoon as well. There's nothing worse when you're under a bit of pressure from behind as well. You just want that car to bite so that you can get on the power as soon as possible. The damn thing just understeers all the time. <laughs> Does Mortensen have a look into Cassio? No, he doesn't. He's late on the brake, so if you can follow him through the chicane well, he might be able to get on the uh, on the back of him down the straight. But good. Again, McCutcheonson strong through the slow corners and pulls away again, Adam. Doing a good job at the moment, isn't he? Uh, as we start to enter the closing stages, what were the lap times like as they came over the line? McCutcheonson won 56.652. Mortensen slightly slower, but only by a few hundredths, such as the fine margins. Uh, that we're getting here in the British Sim Racers Formula Renault Championship. Seven of the race now with less than three minutes to go. And Andreas Mortensen was slowly went out of time and 
I think the main thing we're starting to see in this opening race is that if you want to get an overtake done around here, you've really got to hope for the car in front to make a mistake. Yeah, I think that's... Um, I think a lot of the time, Alex, that's always been really the case with this circuit, is that it more relies on... Um, it is quite sort of one by one, isn't it, until, until yeah. there's a mistake made. So. Oh, very much so. Um, we were just talking the other day, weren't we, about a race that um, the whole along, you know, three cars back yeah. in the day separated by half a tenth of a second. Um, you, did, you did 27 laps and nobody even attempted an overtake because yep. even though you were within that, that such a close distance of each other because there was just no chance of... Um, because you made no, because all three of you made no mistakes. Was it? So it can be like rare. that. Yeah. I, I'm sure I was leading that race at one point as well. As... Um, but I ended up so far behind that there was no, there was, you know, you had to measure it with a calendar as uh, Martin <laughs> Van Lusen on. Uh, I'll tell you what, though, you, you cannot measure that gap with a calendar, Adam, because it's only, it's less than two seconds now. Yeah, been a very good lap by Samuel LeBay. It was 1.9 at the line. It's going to be 1.5 as we come over the line to start uh, the final lap of the race. Maybe Martin Van Lusen just easing off a little bit in the closing stages. But yeah, 55.7 for Van Lusen and a 55.2. Uh, for Samuel LeBert, so just reminding Martin van Lusenov that he's still there as we start lap 8 of 8. As you can see, I mean, passing the Dutch driver is going to be exceptionally difficult at the speed he goes, Alex, even if LeBert can get to it. That's it, yeah, and he'll get a little bit of dirty air when he gets there as well. The lap times are so similar that um, that probably be like hitting a wall, I would think, and he just won't be able to get any closer, so no, nothing worse. That feeling when you know you're just a bit quicker and then it's like, ooh, mm. just can't get any closer now. Now, Stephen Baxter has joined the party in the midfield as well. Um, he's tagged onto the back of Andreas Mortensen. So, Stephen Baxter has started 14th. Now up to 11th place and he's had a very good first sector. He's pretty close to through the Dunlop curve. This could be um, an interesting lap for this battle. Oh, oh it's it interesting for Mortensen. Yeah. There. <laughs> Oh, and he's still going off as we go through Degna 2 and up he to the hairpin. He's back to the Kobayashi him into the hairpin. No, he's not. You don't want to do a Daniel Kvyat round no. there. Uh, you'd rather do a Kobayashi than a Kvyat round there. That was one of the highlights of that race a few years ago, wasn't it, Adam? Just Kobayashi just seemed to have it absolutely nailed into there, and we'll see if Baxter can do the same. Into oh, he might be able to have a go into Spoon here. He has to look, doesn't he? Morrison wrestling with the car going into the first part of Spoon Curve. This is where Kobayashi made a name for himself, wasn't it? Standing in for Timo Glock. Um, nearly 10 years ago now, but uh, here comes the Martin Van Luzen, not too far away. Sorry, yeah, the chequered flag is out for Martin Van Luzen, or just about 10 seconds before he crosses the line. Crosses it now, and he wins the first round of the evening here at Suzuka Circuit. Samuel LeBert in second place. A very strong drive from him. That might be the best drive from LeBert. All season. Oh no, it's contact and Baxter off and, oh, and has a small tap with the wall. Baxter into the wall. He's going to finish the race. What happened there? Looks like he tried to get the, he tried to do the Chembal at Bassi move on Mortensen. And when Mortensen oh. hit that inside curb. There was nothing Mortensen could do really. It just yeah, it was just the merest um, the merest bounce over the curb, Alex. And as Martin Brundle says so often. Uh, while the wheels in the air are in the air, you can't turn, of course. <laughs> yep, that's the way. But uh, yeah, so not really any places lost for Baxter there. You had to go for it, no? Oh yeah, and that's and so you know, Mortensen also had to try and um, try and keep it in, in whatever way he could. Right. Let's take uh, Adam takes through the, the results then. I think everyone's just about finished. Yeah, they have. Yeah, we're just waiting for Tom Depka. I think uh, he's. Is? Yeah, he's just coming round now, but yeah, he should be classified anyway. Uh, Martin Van Lusen, if there was any doubts of, of his pace that he's got, he just set the final, he set the fastest lap of the race on the final lap, uh, 154.8, and the only driver to get into the 154s. Uh, second, he takes the win then. Second for Samuel Lebert, making uh, making an Apex Racing UK car onto the podium. Jack Keefley finishing in third. Chembol at Bassi fourth after starting in sixth. Seventh, uh, fourth, fifth for Josh Thompson. Sixth, David Baker is customary sixth place. Paul Denton seventh. Faith Christian Rose ninth. John McCutchinson, and tenth for Andreas Mortensen managed to get a top ten spot in the end. Eleventh for Stephen Baxter. Twelfth, John Godfrey. Thirteenth for uh, for Jos Honig. Josh Lee Wright fourteenth. Roy Verke fifteenth. He had a 
half spin at the Casio Triangle earlier on. 16th for Tom Depka, that contact on the opening lap, which resulted in Pete Berryman, who finished in 17th retirement. And Kip Stevens didn't take the start. No, he didn't, which I was a little bit surprised about. He's raced pretty much in every round of the season so far. Uh, but speaking of rounds, there are three more of them to come tonight. And the reverse grid wheel will determine exactly who is going to be on pole position. Alex, have we had any adjustments to the wheel this week? Very good question. Taking a quick look now as I'm tardy and not got it prepped already or anything. So. Oh dear. Like, oh no! <laughs> Where's the wheel? You were probably just waiting for me to try and throw it to the next race before you stopped me. Oh, I was. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Get that ready. Um, but no, no changes. Maybe a high probability of a full then. I think it is it automatically <laughs> yeah. a full. Yeah, pretty much. Um, what are we just looking at? So Mr. Depka spinning off, he had the right idea then, didn't he? Because uh, no, not necessarily. Oh, no, well. they, they, there's 15 and 16 that could come into play. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and, and 16's going to be 90% of the segments. Uh, yeah, basically. <laughs> we need a new wheel. New wheel for next week, please. Well, I think it's much like the Porsche series, isn't it? Now you know you pretty much get a full... Full, re full reverse grid. Unless you're unfortunate enough to be the one driver that's, you know... <laughs> oh, oh, if what? it's 15, Depka's not going to be happy, is he, uh, now? Because no. he's got such a good chance to win this. Right, let's bring it up anyway. Here we go. Give it a spin. See where we get. Well, it's nowhere near 15, unfortunately. 19! So it will be Tom Depka. Yeah. Still means so. that Pete Berryman's going to be starting right at the back. Uh, that's not going to change matters, but yeah, Tom Depka on the pole, the Verke second, George Lee Wright's going to be on the second row, Jos Honigan, John Godfrey will be starting in fifth. Well, that could make it an interesting race, uh, especially if Berryman, because Berryman and Van Lusenord are going to be starting fairly close together, so they might even be next to each other, so that'll be um, very, very good indeed, watching those two charge the way through. It reminds me of the uh, oh gosh, 2000 and, was Five? it 2005? Yeah. Uh, Japanese Grand Prix, yeah, where everyone, where there was a, what was it, a wet qualifying and everyone yeah, had to start yeah. at the back, yeah, so. There we go, so we're going to see a repeat of that, maybe? Are there going to be some outside moves on 130 high? Well, you're going to have to wait and find out here on Apex Racing TV as the BSR Formula Renault Series continues after this break.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight, and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Welcome back to the Suzuka International Circuit, Japan, for the BSR Formula Renault Pro Series here on I iRacing Live. And of course, Apex Racing TV, Andrew Woodhouse with Alex Simpson, Adam Bat, and Adam, well, oh, there's um, oh, Sam goes for yeah. a ride into the gravel. Um, first race was, it was okay, wasn't it? Um, it was a good, clean race, just... Um, yeah, not a massive amount of excitement for us, but hopefully this will change with the pretty much the full reverse. Yeah, we've got everything we need to make the racing a bit more exciting now, haven't we? We've got the fast guys at the back in Pete Bowman and Marcin van Nuzenord. Uh Marcin van Nuzenord, exceptionally quick in that opening race, was the only car in the 154s. Uh, so he's going to be starting at the rear. Same for Pete Bowman, uh, uh, both of them official Formula Renault champions in various different seasons. So they're definitely going to be ones to watch. And yeah, we've got four reverse grids. So uh, Tom Depka, Jos Honig, all those guys like Robert Verke as well. They're going to be at the front. They're going to have the opportunity to make their mark on the evening. So uh, let's see what's going to happen uh, in three minutes time. Alex, even though we didn't see any, well, didn't see much great racing in the first race, we definitely saw uh, quite a lot of good driving. And Chembo Lopassi especially with his moving to the chicane, that was a, a pretty special one. One of the better ones we've seen um, as far as the season goes. You know, it's not an easy overtake um, to do, and uh, you lined that up way before he got into like 130R. You knew exactly what he was going to do and where he was going to do it, and uh, yeah, he just didn't know if he was going to go on the inside or the outside. And um, you know, Josh made him go to the uh, to the outside, and and he nailed it. So great move. Yeah, it was very very good indeed. And um, well, he's going to be starting somewhere near the rear of the field, Adam, but. As we've uh, established already tonight, it's not the easiest circuit to overtake on, although we also mentioned the 2005 uh, Japanese Grand Prix here. Yeah, I think if you're thinking of overtaking opportunities on this circuit, there's only a few that spring to mind compared to uh, the Porsche Cup, where we were racing last night at Road America. Um, here at... Yeah, here at Suzuki, you've got the hairpin at the back end of the circuit. That's probably one of the main overtaking points. And then you've got the Casio Triangle, which Chembo Labassi spins it in out of the, the final corner. The first corner is a really difficult place to overtake. You've got to be alongside by the time you get there. So the drivers have to pick their overtaking opportunities uh, pretty carefully here around this circuit. Yeah. Pretty much every corner at Road America is a uh, overtaking spot. Um yeah, it's a, it's, it's a very, very good circuit. I, I do love the circuit. Alex, what's your favourite part of it? I know, obviously, you're yes. a bit of a specialist. Around yeah, there. the S's for me is absolutely, absolutely amazing section of track. Um, and it's not like a straightforward as well. You know, you have to literally compromise the very first line to get the maximum speed through there and get the very last corner right. That's the way it works. So you... You're not driving a tr traditional line through there as well. So once you know that line, just the flow is just amazing. Yeah, you, you, the shortest route is not always the fastest around that that part of the course, is it? Yeah. I, I, know what you, I know what you're getting at there. I used to be very fast. When we used to race together, I used to be very fast with the S's. And then it was the rest of the track that I, I tended to struggle with. I've always um, not really got on that well with, say, with Spoon. Or with the hairpin because I, I just I don't know I can never seem to get really the right feel through there um, Adam what about yourself because this is a fantastic place to go race yeah uh, it is up there actually one of my favorite circuits uh, probably on the iRacing service what, what parts do I struggle about I usually struggle about around the the Dunlop curve and uh, Degner's one and two especially for some reason uh, Degner two I always used to find uh, the exit of that uh, getting the best possible exit really really difficult for some reason but yeah yeah suzuka's right up there with one of my favorites which is a bit of a surprise really i don't really like the challenging circuits or who doesn't but uh <laughs> yeah yeah i do like this circuit i'm quite slow through degna one so it probably means that that's why i'm that's why i'm quite good through degna two because i'm not going quite as fast as so uh, as the rest of you are through there uh warm-up is over and we'll be heading down to grid any moment now and uh yeah, Adam, take us through the, uh, the the order of the victims. Okay, on pole position, it is a Tom Depka. Second is George Lee Wright. Third is Joss Honig. Fourth is John Godfrey. Fifth, Stephen Baxter. Sixth, Andreas Mortensen. Then John McCutcheonson in seventh. Eighth, Christian Rose. Ninth, Paul Denton and David Baker rounding up the top ten. Josh Thompson, eleventh. Chen Bollett Bassi starting in twelfth. Jack Keefley, thirteenth. Samuel LeBaire in fourteenth. 15th is our race one winner, Martin van Luzenord, and then Pete Bowman in 16th, Kip Stevens in 17th, and Roy Verke will be starting at the back in 18th. 
Okay then, is Kip Stevens going to take the start this time, I wonder? Well, Grizz is, yeah. I hope he is, he needs to get out there. It doesn't look like he has. We've only got a few seconds to go. So might, just be the might just be the admin for the session, I think. Could well be. Well, 17 cars into battle then. That's going to commence very, very shortly. Green, green, green. Here we go. Green flag flies at Suzuka. Oh, good start by Depka immediately. He's having to defend. Honig and Godfrey are side by side into turn one as well. But Tom Depka converting his pole position into the lead into turn one. Not always the easiest thing to do here. Oh, Wright's trying to go up the inside. And he's done it. Oh, he oh, loses no, he the car. Off he goes. Well, oh well. Uh, Josh Sonig is in second place. But third place. Ahead of Stephen Baxter. And uh, John McCutchinson. Then Mortensen. Then the two CQR cars. Rose and Baker. And then Thompson. Thompson's trying to go around the outside of the Dunlop curve. Oh man, that was close. He's going to try and go the inside of Degna 1. Surely it's not going to work. Baker gets forced onto the AstroTurf. Thompson somehow manages to make that work, Alex. I'm not sure how. Oh, three wide. Berryman van Lusenard and. Oh, sorry, Berryman and the Bear. And it was, uh, I think it was Dave Baker. Madness. Yeah, Dave, unfortunately, just uh, where he got sort of muscled out wide at the Degners has just sort of had that it's just been slow hasn't he so Godfrey back on the, the line on the rhythm and everybody's trying to get by him Godfrey into the lead Alex and uh oh he's off oh got, nah. a, got giddy as you would say Andrew it, I, it, that used to happen to me <laughs> but now he's gonna try to um gonna lose a place to Honig yeah Honig oh, of course they had off. that coming together didn't they uh, at um Nürburgring Oh, that a little bit a, tasty afterwards. I have to say, it was a hilarious crash. And so, oh, so oh, that's in the background. He's, he's oh. just hit Tom Demke. Oh, well, that wasn't hilarious. Well, it was, it was, no, that was quick. I'll be honest, that was pretty clumsy. Here comes Godfrey. And he what, forgotten about that infraction of uh, Nürburgring. The one time, Alex, and all the, the really super fast drivers are at the back, and all this lot are doing is fighting and crashing. Holly versus Godfrey. Oh, Godfrey's trying to go around the outside. It's going to find it difficult. And behind them, Thompson pushes Baxter slightly off the track. Yeah, Thompson's quick as well. He's quick enough that if he can get to the front, he might scamper away before the likes of LeBaire and lose an order. Although Martin was one of the drivers that got caught up. We saw spinning in the background at a 130R. But wing damage as well, and we know how that went for him last week. Um, Thompson drove great in the first race, and I think he's doing the same here. Very, very aggressive on the opening laps, and uh, but um, Adam doing it without making any contact, and that's the that's the key. That's the key. Yes, smoothness is key. Eight <laughs> positions gained for uh, for Josh Thompson, and it looks like the mistake for Honig. Here comes Thompson. Oh, and Thompson's he's boxed, boxed in. Godfrey. In. Godfrey's boxed in, and Thompson's oh. going to go for it. That's fantastic. On the inside. Maybe that that's so, it. Oh, they blocked wheels. Oh, and oh, oh no. contact behind. McCutcheon around. Oh, Baxter was spinning, and McCutchinson was the poor sacrificial lamp. It's a car in the gravel at the hairpin. That Mortensen, Mortensen in the gravel. Dear. A lot of gravel on those. Berryman's out. Mission and tires. Pete Bears Berryman. on the back. What happened to Berryman? Pete not having a great Oh, um, Thompson spins and hits Honig. And oh, Honig's no. car is damaged. Honig's car is very damaged. I think he's going to be out. See what happened there. Thompson spun, hit your Sonic, and um, now Samuel Le Bear finds himself in the lead. Oh. He was very, very quick in the opening round. Here comes Cembo Labassi as well, up oh, to third second. Oh, he's had enough <laughs> of that, Molly Bassi. He wants to get through into second place, and he does. Fantastic. Excellent. Going a little Bully replay Bassi. of the incident. Now he's off after Samuel Le Bear. There's all, there's all sorts of incidents to, to see, probably, Alex, here. And there's three or four overtaking moves going on at once, Adam, down the straight. Baker versus Thompson, Keefley versus Baxter into turn one. That's Keefley through into fourth, losing odd up to seventh. Wright versus um, uh, 
Rose, I think, as well. Rose defending. And uh, Lusenard, yeah, how's he got up into seventh? Well, just picking the bones, I think. But his car looks like it's repaired once, now, once again now. Though he did have some front wing damage. It looks like it has cured itself. He's still got a... Oh, no, it's Josh Thompson I'm looking at. It's got a lot of front wing damage after that collision at the final chicane. Here comes the CQR car of Rose, though. He's got a good opportunity through the Dunlop curve here. George, you oh, might no. think you're making it three wide. He won't just think about it, he'll do it as well. That's oh, the, like Josh has got the horrible understeer in that car as well. Just see him turn in there to Digna 1, the thing just ploughed straight on. Loses the place as well. Thompson might have a go back into airpin, he probably will actually, because he, um, probably the mood he's in at the minute after that, after that mistake. I mean, in fairness, he's lucky he's not out of the race because it was yeah. only a light hit with Honig. And um, Thompson, he was driven well in this meeting, like I say, coming a cropper there. Baker side by side with Van Luzenod. Baker's going to go through as Van Luzenod. Have the oh, momentum no, out the corner. Baker, yeah, actually, fantastic yeah. drive out of there. <laughs> Baker won that place back as well. That's his sixth place. Oh, so. he'll fight hard for the sixth place, Alex, and he'll try, he'll try and take it away from Arten here, but doesn't have the speed. Baker down the straight. He's got. He, oh, he's got a decent. Really decent follow through 130 but it's not close enough. Godfrey's defending from yeah. Baxter while potentially having a little look at Keithley, but Keithley through and starting to pull away. So, uh, Depka's led the race. Wright led the race for like uh, five metres. The Bears led it. Godfrey's led it. And I think Honig's led it. I think uh, Thompson as well. So, six or seven different leaders in this one race, and we're only on lap four. Compared to the one that we had in race one as well. Um, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's mental, but it's brilliant. What we've been building up to, haven't we? Eight laps now instead of a timed race. Uh, the race organisers. Oh, as yeah. here comes the inside. That's Baxter versus Keith uh, versus Godfrey, isn't it? Van Luzenod. Van Luzenod, yeah, man. Van Luzenod, the man on the mission here. He wants to get up and join the likes of Keith Lee, Bonabassi, and LeBaire, and he's doing so at the moment. Lap four, half race distance, and he's up to fifth. I think that's reputation on this play there, Alex, because I think it scared Baxter off the track more than anything else. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I think, um, excuse me, I think Van Luzenord was just, I think he was hoping that very thing would happen. And he'd get yeah, the door open for him, and he did. Baxter, I think the last few weeks we've really seen sort of, you know, he's really trying to, um, oh! Oh, massive twitch. He's trying to see if he can just finish as many races as he wants. You know, he's in a really, really strong position in the championship, and he doesn't want to lose that. He's a good driver, and uh, oh, he's doing great in the uh, touring car championship as well, isn't he? So, having a good, yeah, having a very good performance in the start of uh, the start of his season in the BSR TC. Because of the sheer amount of cars on him, I've forgotten who he drives for. Can you help me help with that one? Who's over here, Jack Keefley? Baxter. Uh, uh, the touring cars. Yeah, just oh. fanatic, doesn't he? Fanatic, yeah, fanatic, sorry, yeah. yeah, there we go, yeah. These teammates with, of course, Sven Glatzel, who's made a fantastic start to the season. Oh, they all have. There's Getting tasty many, up front, boys. Many, many Here rookies comes. has... Oh! Sorry, oh, yeah. I was looking at the battle for... Sorry, third, I was looking at yeah. the battle further down. I was looking at third and fourth, yeah. The third, fourth, fifth and sixth. They were all trying to overtake each other as well, but here comes Chembo the Passi. The bear got an racing driver. run as well, all over the kerbs. Renault doesn't like that, really sacrifices the uh, speed as it bottoms out. The Bear, though, taking a lot of speed into uh, Turn 1. Great yeah, defensive that was, driving. That yeah, was nice, that from the Bear. And he's not through into fourth. That's really the only the only real defence through that corner, Alex, isn't it? Just, just carry as much speed as you can and just hope that the guy um, backs out of it. That, yeah, that's it, really. You know, if the person on the outside is just as committed, though, it can, uh, it can usually end rather poorly for the person on the outside. Uh, Van Luzenord up into fourth position, by the way. Managed to get ahead of Godfrey. Yeah, Baxter very close to Godfrey. Let's just see that as well. There we go. Up to the hairpin. Yeah. Worth pointing out as well, we're starting to get... Um, information trickle down of the TV schedule for this as well so it's all going to be aired on Jinx Esport TV Obviously Hallelujah! We're just, we're just building the um, the uh, broadcasts up slowly Ooh. Oh, this looks good Here oh, comes dear. Godfrey That's Baxter and Godfrey just millimetres apart through the king yeah. before Spoon yeah, yeah, they they must have a great 
Oh yeah, Baker will be watching through his fingers, no doubt. Here he comes. Oh, Baker no. senses his sixth place. He might have to push someone to do oh, it. He's, he's, oh. <laughs> Trying to find a gap, in, a gap in the middle, possibly, Baker. But uh, This is not going to go well. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. No! Oh! Baxter somehow, I think he just got the call. He may have just got the clear call, Alex, because he... Oh, Baker's going through, is he? No. He might be soon, though, because Godfrey's got a bit deep into the Casio chicane. And here comes... Yeah, here comes Baker. He's got a nice run. Well, has got to run for the lead. And the outside goes... Closer. Um... Oh, he's going to try, isn't he? He's going to try and get a cutback as well on the exit of turn two, but surely that's not going to work. No, it doesn't. And Samuel LeBert holds on for just another lap. Lap six of eight, free to go. Alex, you can get the cutback there, but the problem is it's just you run out of road before the S's section. That's it, yeah. And again, you need to carry that extra momentum through the left-hand part so you've got the inside for the next. That's the trouble. And we've seen with the touring cars many a times that actually if you do get side-by-side -side along there, you usually side-by-side -side for the whole sector. Uh, Baker and uh, Godfrey oh, yeah. are side by side through Dunlop. Oh dear. I always get nervous through there because it's very, very, it's quite narrow. Godfrey right. Oh my word. Oh dear me, incoming. Well, he made it somehow. I have no idea how he did that, but he. Oh! Godfrey getting sideways over the AstroTurf. Godfrey had a look into the hairpin, but. Well, George Lee Wright was in last uh, uh, halfway around the first lap. He's now up to seventh place due to the misfortune of others, you could say. But uh, yeah, he's up to seventh place now. Yeah, I mean, second to first to last to the middle again. It's not too bad, is it? As um, who's that? Sorry, I keep getting the apex cars confused. Godfrey is uh, he's not giving up on this position, though, Alex. You know, George doesn't seem to have particularly fantastic straight line speed. That be a baseline setup that he's using, possibly. Oh, I don't know who's that. Is that Rose behind? He is. Rose looks particularly uh, racy right at the minute as well. On a little look. In the body language of that CQR car, looking to uh, take advantage of any missteps by these these two in front. Kem still can't. This time is not close enough to even have a look at uh, Lee Bear to the first corner, but I think Godfrey might have a look here at right who defends. Godfrey with a very nice line. That's a beautiful line from John Godfrey. But again, um, Alex, it's just too short to take advantage of that, isn't yeah. it, before you've got to turn left? Yeah, absolutely. Just having a quick look up front as well with two laps to go. LeBaire still holding on three tenths of a second. Nothing between them the last lap, couple of tenths um, that uh, LeBaire actually pulled away, so... But, uh, yeah, it just seems like um, Sam seems to have the um, the turn one sort of move covered, so... Um, Jem's going to have to look elsewhere, he needs to nail it like he did, he needs to nail Spoon, that's his thing, you know, and make sure he gets to drive off there again, so he can potentially do what we saw early on in the last race that we praised him so much about. Indeed, and, um He's been very good, hasn't he, in the RS and World Championship Series as well this season? Uh, he has. The last week at uh, Road America, I think he finished fifth or sixth, something like sixth, I think it was. So, I yeah, mean, good drive um, from, from him there. Very difficult as well to change teams, isn't it? Um, just after the start of the season and, um, and really make it work, and that's what he's done. Yeah, it is, and um, actually they've um, built quite a great little unit there as well now, so um, yeah. it'll be interesting to see. Um, how they go, and obviously showing their um, class in the uh, GT World Championship. Oh, here he well. goes now. Oh, the massive inside. Oh, and Libert is in just enough room. That's wonderful. Really good defending by Libert. That's perfect, Adam, isn't it? Yeah, he had the line. He got to cho choose what he wanted to do with it, and occasionally force uh, Chembo Lebasi just wide. And it looks like we might have a battle on our hands for third and fourth as we start the final lap, but it's shades of Raikkonen versus Fizzy Keller here going into the first corner. Lebert versus Chembal at Bassi as we get the white flag. Ah, oh, don't remind me. Sorry, you won't put... massive Fizzy Keller fan here, by the way. That was such that was an awful day for me. <laughs> that was terrible. Raikkonen at that McLaren, man. goodness me, that was fast around here. As um, someone else very, very fast around here, though, is Daniel Lebert. Prove that in race one by closing down Martin Van Lusen on something that 
not been done many times this season. Will Martin get to Keithley as well and get that podium? Well, he's there, but... I mean, both of these two have been hunting the leaders down, but they're not going to get there, so it is just a battle for the podium. And little mistake for uh, Jem there coming off of uh, Degna too, just up on the kerb. Sets him back about half a second, but still within range. Gets a good exit out of the uh, hairpin. Might be able to draft up to um, to LeBaire down and into Spoon. It's this all-important Spoon corner. If we gain half a second on these front two in the on the previous time round, Adam, and uh, now he's got some real company from Van Luzenort. Yeah, Spoon. Spoon. Probably, probably closer than Chem is to Liber at the moment as we go out of the second part of Spoon Curve. Marcel Van Lusenord, I think he senses the opportunity and Jack Keithley knows it. He moves to the inside straight away. And Van Lusenord ducks to the outside and he might even get this move done by the time we get to 130 yard. The Apex Academy car is so quick. He's forcing Keithley. We need to, we need to see the front. We need to see the front now. As Liber has followed Bassi was very quick through 130 yard. Oh, oh no. he goes oh, no. wide. He can't hold it. Samuel Libert, 14th on the grid, he's going to come through. He's going to win in the round, second round of the evening. Keith Lee tries to get back at Van Luzenod, he can't do it. Well, we, saw Still... we saw Chembal Abbasi perfect that move around the outside in race one. He tries it again in race two, however, uh, Samuel Libert was uh, wise to that move. Just a tiny bit. Uh, did Baker on do the it break. again, by the way? Where did Baker finish there? Sixth. My climbing screen's gone crazy. <laughs> he did get sixth place. Yeah. I see him weaving around like he'd won, so I knew it must have been. <laughs> <laughs> must have been P6, and indeed it was for David Baker. Uh, now then, is John McCutchinson still going? He is. If Stevens has made it out onto the track, but he is three laps down. <laughs> yeah, thanks for turning up halfway through the race there, but yeah. Um, but he's here, and he has made it. Although it does mean he won't get any points for this one, unfortunately. Because he won't be eligible his practice, I guess. And it won't, and it won't make him eligible for the reverse grid either. So. No, that'll be John McCutcheon. He'll be on pole, won't it? So. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Alex, but that's kind of Kai bossed your uh, your job, really, hasn't it? Because they've only four, only fourteen finished. Let's not even bother spinning it. There's no point. No. There isn't. There actually isn't. John McCutchinson then will be our pole sitter for round three of the evening. And you can join us for that uh, in well, ten minutes time here at Apex Racing TV. BSR Formula Renault continues here live.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight, and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group, 
to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Round three is upon us at Suzuka in the BSR Formula Renault Championship. Andrew Woodhouse with Adam Bath and Alex Simpson in Japan for Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live. And um, Adam, well, the second race was fantastic, much better than the first one. And we really saw all kinds of things going on. We had about seven different leaders even. Yeah, it was pretty chaotic, wasn't it? Probably made up for the lack of action we saw in the first race. But we've, now we've got to do it all again. Race three with, once again, another full reverse grid. And the likes of Martin Van Luz and Orton Samuel LeBear, who fought their way through the field so valiantly to get to the front in race two, are going to have to do it all again in race three. I don't think we're going to be seeing any more of uh, Pete Berryman, though, unfortunately, after what was uh, pretty right, pretty much a write-off of an evening for him. Yeah, now he's written off the rest of it himself. So um, a little surprising there, but, you know, likewise... I'll give him we a have bit all... of a kick later, don't worry, because he's still a donut, because he's still leading the championship, you know, and he can take those points into the, some of the, the bonus points into the showdown, so, yeah. Billy move, toys well, out of proud. Well, <laughs> to, be, to be fair, obviously you were saying with the team only having two drivers as well at the start of the uh, Yeah, exactly. Start start of the proceedings, it doesn't help then... for the team championship either, does it? So. But, um... It's just what happens, though, isn't it? Unfortunately, got hit in qualifying, and that's... Uh, frustration that's, builds, That's the main it? cause of the there. issue, but... And whoever hit him in qualifying, really, should receive a, a penalty, because that was... Um, well, you would, you, would, you would say that's completely ruined the evening for him, but... It is what it is, and, that's, and the rest of them are going to carry on, so... Van Luzenov versus Bollock Bassi versus Liber. That's what I'm looking forward to, Adam, because... Uh, versus Keithley, because... They were very, very quick in um, the first two races. And they seem to have mastered now the, the art of working their way through the fields after reverse grids, because due to the, the grid sizes that we have now, it is almost a certainty that it's going to be full reverse grids every time. And to win a championship, you're definitely going to have to work out how to best manage those reverse grid situations. And they seem to be doing so now. Yeah, Alex, who loses out in these situations of full reverse grids, really? Because well, obviously the fast guys have got a history of coming through. Is it the yeah, ones I that are maybe in the middle that lose out? I, really, I think actually the people towards the front that have been put on pole, they're the ones that lose out because we have... Sm I know we're saying it's a full reverse, but actually really it's small. You know, considering mm. we've had, you know, 25 and 30 reversed. You know, so it's a lot harder for them to stay at the front and a lot easier for the quicker guys to come through. So actually you can say it's it's the people who would be... You know, would struggle to win, but um, you know they've got less of an opportunity now because um, there's not so many cars for the quick guys to get by. We do have a certain Kip Stevens on the grid at this time, which is very, very good to see. McCutchinson on pole, Thompson second, Depka third, Denton fourth, and Christian Rose rounds out the top five. Here we go. Green, green, green. Green light is on. They're away from the line here. Whoa, that's already. Um, I think that was Thompson cutting across very quickly. And John McCutchinson, who won a race at Road America earlier on in the season, he leads from Josh Thompson. Then it's Tom Depka. Then it's Christian Rose. And uh, Paul Denton has managed to keep his fifth position up. Oh, keep it keep ahead of the rest of them. And uh, George oh. Lee writes around and collects. Uh, that might have been Keith Lee. Uh, and he might have picked up some damage there, Jack Keithley, but yeah, it was all kicking off in the, uh, in the S's. Keithley, or was it Honig? Oh no, not sure. It looked like they both escaped without damage, but one of them definitely did take a hit, so uh, they're on their way oh, now. No. Oh, Keithley yeah, took both. a massive hit. It's like he I got damage and it reset. Uh, there was contact with Honig as well, but yeah, Keithley unfortunately got the... The front of it. Alex Keithley's wing was definitely damaged, but then it repaired itself instantly. Very, very strange. I think I remember that happening to Boychuk Stavirich once at Interlagos, and we had a huge crash here. So here comes McCutchinson and Thompson. Part of the lead then. Into Spoon. John McCutchinson. Ooh, oh, he contact. cuts across! And Thompson, he wasn't clear! Oh! That was Rose! Almost running into the back of McCutchinson. How he avoided him, I've no idea. But John wasn't clear. Turned the cross into Thompson, and he's lucky that he didn't um, have to retire from the race. But now there's a, a swarm for second place, Alex. Yep, just seeing that back on replay, like you said, Josh had his nose up the inside, was entitled for a little bit of space going in there, wasn't given. Oh, McCutcheon's down the inside into the chicane. That looks like a good move, but 
loses out on the exit. Uh, John's car still seems uh, intact. I think Josh has got some front wing damage, unfortunately. So the guys are going to slowly work their way towards him. Uh, it's definitely bent the front of that. Yeah, the front wing there. But he's got a chance to get clear at the moment, hasn't he, while these guys are fighting. McCutcheon's is trying to go around the outside. He's trying every single thing he can to try and uh, get the better of Christian Rose. And Lusinol's already up to fourth place. Seven positions gained for right. the race on winner. Yeah, right behind um, Hutchinson, who we're on board with there. We can just see uh, Martin in the background. He picks Academy livery with the... Um, got more gold wheels on his? No, that's John, isn't it? He's got the gold wheels. I'll agree with the gold. Rose will, be hoping he the can, silver. Uh, silver, yeah. Rose will be hoping he can become a thorny subject for uh, Josh Thompson, but I reckon he's going to have to look behind him because look who is already. Oh, oh. and there goes McCutchinson. Well, that's the end of him. Exit stage right, quite literally there. Um, yes, indeed. Up the inside goes Libert. And that's a good move by him. Let's Into. see what happened there. Um, he went off in Degna 1. I think he's a bit afraid Martin was going to come up the inside, put him on a slightly different line, and then just uh, lost it coming out of Degna 2. Yep. That's um, so often happens. We've seen it many times. Back is really close together, though, when you look at it. Oh. Baxter very close to Denton. Oh. Two teammates, Denton up the inside of Bullet Bassey. Very wide. Going on, Here we Oh, I was just comment yeah, I was just me doing what um, Alex is talking about there. Uh, so here comes John Bonapassi versus two Faker Simsport cars. And losing all up to second place as well, past Christian Rose before 130R. Thompson will be hoping that damage is repaired, otherwise he'll be toast in a couple of laps because Van Lusenod's... Oh, I think the damage is repaired for Thompson. It does look like it, actually, so he's OK. So this could be well, quite... Where are these phantom repairs coming from? Yeah, we just a... a bit of net code or something, so server obviously not quite... Um, Running um, as good ping as, as normal. Wonder, wonder, bear. wonder if they have a macro for that. Oh dear. As a sort of wheel to wheel Samuel Levert versus David Baker into the first corner. And you fired, are you fired again? I think I'm fired, yeah. Very fired, I think, after that. Yeah, as, uh, <laughs> definitely fired. As, um... <laughs> oh dear, dear. We're, we're talking about buying in bulk, by the way. We're not talking about. Anyway, um, Josh Thompson leads the way by what is that? Uh, Alex, about two and a half. Two point five. Yep, on the live okay. timing at the moment. Um, Van Lusenord. Let's see if he can gain quickly because uh, Thompson is fast round here. Yeah, good lap. Four tenths of a second was the difference last lap. So at that sort of rate, it's going to be quite close actually. There's only six laps left of this race, of course. Yeah, or already exactly. It's an eight-lap race. The first one was by time. Then we've had laps, of course, since then. The bear might have a bit of front wing damage as well, so I think he's going to struggle to um, keep up with um, Martin. Tom Decker and uh, Paul Denton having a good battle, and Baxter is there as well. Decker's trying to hold off Faker Simswatt here, and uh, able to do it so far! Wow, Denton very nearly into the back of it. Not been the best race for Decker, has it? Lost five positions at the start. That might have been involved in some part of contact, but Denton, he's had issues as well. Yeah, down 5 2. Oh, LeBear and Rose, look at this. One tenth of a second separates them. Rose jinks one way. LeBear up the inside onto the brakes. Committed. Good, good move there. Rose sort of Built decided to. The... to he sort of decided not to defend it, and then he sort of half decided to try and go around the outside, but it was too late. As uh, Dave Baker's in fifth. Yeah, he's got to slow down. He's too far up. Going after his teammate. Um, and here comes Denton now. That group. Yeah, they're all flying across the track. Only outside he's going to go is, uh, is uh, Paul Denton there. Can't keep it though, it's dirty on the outside of turn one. Although, Depka has almost opened the door there. Around the outside goes Baxter. That was very good. Taking the opportunity when it presented itself. Here comes Mortensen. And Denton, if he's not careful, is going to be um, going all the way back. Jack Keithley is doing has managed to catch back up to this pack. Yeah, his car doesn't look all that bad either, so not sure what's going on. If Stevens, Roy Viverk having a decent battle out there, they were. Uh, Viverk has managed to get through and um, go off down the road. 
see if uh, Baker's going to put a move on his teammate as Rose locks up into the hairpin. One second is the gap up front. Come down uh, second and a half that last lap. Crazy. Another good lap from yeah. um, Thompson. Oh, that's George Lee Wright, who's a lap down. Uh, we should just mention. Doesn't doesn't really surprise me that he's. Um, Dangerously close to, the, to our race leader, to be honest. Yeah, we don't want a Joey Logano, Matt Kenseth on our hands here. Oh, do we? No, I'm only joking. We don't really. <laughs> and although there you go. I do, although uh, Kenseth, uh, Kenseth paid him back good and proper, and I enjoyed that. But uh, it comes <laughs> Van Lusen. <laughs> Likewise. Van Lusen, although we'll be enjoying it if he manages to get through on uh, his teammate, Thompson. Well, two Academy cars now duking it out for the win with just under half the race to go, like five of eight, four to go, here they come. Yeah, good, um, yeah, got a good run did Van Lewis not. Looks like Thompson's not even going to fight this. Uh, teammates, I'm not surprised, you know, they don't want to do anything Makes silly sense. and take each other out, so I have to say with the, um, with the main UK team sort of suffering with the numbers at the moment, this is a good chance for them to capitalise and close right up and, um, the battle between them and um, Faker Simsport is very, very close as well for the team championship. So they need some good results. Godfrey sitting in seventh place, piling on the points in this round. Yeah, I was almost going to suggest that would it be worth theories going down to two car teams? But then you look at Faker Simsport and they've managed to keep the complement of four drivers. So why should they? Why should they lose out? Uh, exactly. Know? They've actually kept to their end of the bargain type thing. So. Apex Academy are 800 points or so behind Fakers in Sport Europe, but uh, doing very well here. And Apex, yeah, and Apex UK only 160 ahead of Fakers in Sport going into this race meeting. Yeah, yeah. I think um, Fake will be leading after this one, to be honest. Yeah, I reckon that's pretty much certain. Um, Alex, the Academy team has suffered from um, a lot of crashes really earlier on in the season and but, um, missed really opportunities. It. Yeah, we, we comment as we're looking at Bullock Bassi having a move on Baker here. Um, we did we did say Baker oh, needed to go down a place. There it is. Well, so. I think he's done that intentionally. <laughs> if he I gets have to say, th out of four, this, four six very, places um, is almost as good as four wins as far as uh, Baker's concerned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to get you for that later on, I reckon. <laughs> But yeah, it, no, he'll be happy with it. And you know what, it looks very likely he's going to finish sixth as well because he's a bit quicker than Godfrey. So, you know, let's see, um, see what Dave can do. Morsonson versus Baxter. That's uh, going on into the Castillo Triangle. It looks like Morsonson's got the move done by the time we got there. It's a good race for him. Six positions gained. Uh, one of the biggest movers through the field, really, if you count out LeBaire and Martin Van Lusenor. Yeah, indeed. Um, Bolt Bassett, seven places. Chris Moulton's has just got by Stephen Baxter on that lap. He's now at the head of this big pack and Denton and Depka still going for it. They've both dropped down a couple of positions, Alex, but they're still battling away. Oh. Close. Plus we have the um, 24 hours of the Nürburgring, Alex, uh, at the weekend. Yeah, unfortunately I didn't catch any of that, so I don't even know who won it in the different classes. But yeah, it would have been a, um, a, a fun race, no doubt. But... I know Cheese and Wine had a bit of a disaster. Dear. Um, You're allowed to say it because he's your uh, commentary colleague on in the Porsche Cup. Yeah, I was speaking to Conrad last night. I was speaking to Sam as well, who raced in the Audi. I think they did relatively well. Uh, yeah, Sam did, Sam did well. I think he got a top. He got a top ten, or just he was just outside the top ten. Yeah, so. I think got thirteen things of Valve. He barely got any any sleep. Finished uh, the race though. That's what that's what's important. It's something like that. They've been doing the graveyard shift. Yeah, Le Mans 24 hours, of course, coming up in, oh gosh, is that about six weeks, maybe? Something like that? Not too far away, is it? We're about to start May, and uh, yeah, Le Mans, some way in June. I wonder if we'll get that day-to-night transition that we're after before Le Mans. That would be a nice surprise, I race, and I reckon. be very nice indeed. Fancy you going that with it at all? Uh, if, if I can, yeah. If I can, I, I do fancy it, but we'll see. Obviously see what the situation is with the old hardware, as... Um, Bollock Bassi and Rose then. And Bollock Bassi's got, well, he's tried this move two or three times. He got it right the first time, got oh. it very wrong the second time, and just about just about managed it the third time. Yeah, I think Rose made that easy yeah, for him there, didn't he? Did. <laughs> oh, big slide, doesn't it? And um, yeah, Bollock Bassi going through. 
showing his quality as the World Championship driver. Might throw David oh. Baker a lifeline to get that fifth position as well. Now, Depka hasn't given up on Paul Denton's position of 10th. Let's see if Depka can do anything about it. Joss Honig's in there as well. Well, it goes very wide, does Paul Denton there. And this gives him the opportunity, uh, Tom, uh, Tom Depka, but he lost nowhere a for bit it. Of, he lost a bit of momentum, didn't he? But um, oh, I thought you might try and surprise him. You can occasionally do that, Alex, can't you? Just maybe... Yeah, because the line, to get the line. Best, you know, to get the best through Dunlop is to take those wide sweeping lines, but actually you lose a little bit of time on the way in by doing that. So you can just nip your nose in there, and then, of course, the driver has to leave the room. So, yeah. Um, But, yeah, you've got to make sure that they see you coming, otherwise you just end up in a big pile. Uh, Barber's a good one for that as well. As you can see, uh, ah, Rose versus Baker versus Bolut Bassi. This is over fourth position. One lap to go at the end of this one, by the way. Everybody. Everyone's still running. George Lee Wright, the only car one lap down so far. Yeah, he's actually two now, so he won't score any points. Won't be eligible That's for the shame. reverse grid either. A big shame, isn't it? As uh, Here comes David Baker then. Does he want to stay in that sixth place or does he want a top five? He's going to have to find out now. Well, he's um, breaking with tradition here. Oh, Alex do it, Dave! Is, <laughs> it's going to be dangerous territory for him. Going Come on, uncharted, Rose, defend uncharted this. Waters Don't let him through. <laughs> you can have a choice, that's the thing. Baker, pressuring hard. I wonder if they're just following suit here anyway. Being CQR teammates at this point. No, There's no real sense in uh, risking fifth and sixth places here, really. Baker yeah, of course, they won't want to battle too much as well because Godfrey's only a few seconds behind, but yeah, well, the inside of his teammates. Baker has got a very good run, but Rose Come on, go all the way around, around the outside. The outside. That's, impressive. No. That's the long way around. <laughs> too long. Baker up into fifth position. Got to scroll up fifth on the timing screen now. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Down, down into third. For, you don't have to scroll yeah. down the timing sheet at all with this, with this one, I don't know, I'm afraid. No, we don't, no. <laughs> Uh, David Baker, yeah, up into, in, up into the top five. Three positions gained for him. How, how is Martin Van Lusen not doing it? It's a bigger gap than it was in race one. 3.5 second lead over Josh Thompson. And believe it or not, the fastest lap in the race he currently holds as well. 55.666. Can he set the fastest lap on the final lap of the race? That's what he did in race one. He's just got uh, about 2.5 kilometers left in this run. Samuel LeBear in third was quicker on that previous lap. But yeah, I think Van Lusen are just taking it a little bit easy now. Trying not to, uh, not to make any mistakes. He's going quickly out there, but you can tell he's smooth and uh, relaxed in the car, and that's I think what you what you need, of course. Up the hill then, down the back straight, past the um, probably the national pits here. Then 130R, flat out. Pretty sure it is in this Renault, and then. Hard on the brakes into the Casio Triangle. Through that he comes. Punches it out of the corner. Don't spin the car. There we go. To the inside. And Martin Van Luzenoor takes round three here in Japan. Thompson and LeBert round out the podium. David Baker is going to get that fifth place in the end. And he's delighted with it. There you go. One better than the previous. John Godfrey over in 7th, Andres Mortensen in 8th, Stephen Baxter, Paul Denton, oh that was close wasn't it, Keith Lee and Depka, Depka just takes it by a 10. John McCutchinson getting some nice air to those, uh, to those feet on the pedals and uh, he'll be coming around to uh, get the sweet taste of reverse grid pole yet again. Yeah, cooling is definitely optimised there Alex. Yeah indeed. Um... Uh, what you can, what you can not, say there. Aerodynamics, yeah, not, not so much. But. Not so much. What well, no. I tell you, what I'll be interested in is um, okay. we've seen obviously the you know Steve Myers tweeted or Facebook the damage model thing. It'll be good yeah. when we can start seeing like the odd nose cone just get obliterated and sort of left on the track for a little bit. And... Yeah, because we, because I think we do. Um, it would mean that drivers wouldn't just be able to steam through the accident sites like they. Tend, a lot of them tend to do. They'd have to look out for flying, flying objects yeah. and 
things like that. So yeah, I think it'd be very, very good indeed. Um, and and it did look good. The test that they did did look good, and hopefully they uh, elaborate on that some more in the future. We need more videos, guys. Come on. Right. Now, Adam, if you could take us through the finishing order then for round three of the evening. Okay, hey, Martin Van Nusen, or fastest in warm-up, started in position 11 and got the win as well. He's a, all about the ones. Second for Josh Thompson, third for Samuel Lebert, fourth for Chambol Abassi, David Baker gets that fifth position. Uh, sixth for Christian Roses, CQR teammate, and then John Godfrey, seventh. Eighth for Andreas Mortensen, ninth Stephen Baxter, and tenth for Paul Denton. Tom Deppiker, eleventh. Jack Keefley in twelfth. Thirteenth for Jos Honig, fourteenth for Verke. 15th, Kip Stevens, and then his teammate, John McCutcheon, and 16th, going to be on the reverse grid pole. And George Lee Wright, uh, he had the number one on his car for that race, and he finished in 17th place in the end, four laps down. All right then. Um, Alex, there is some spinning to be done. See, there is. Let me just bring up the wheel. It's like the CQR Let's... drivers race back to the pits. I guarantee that John McCutcheon could be on the pole then, but it's definitely going to be 100%. It's going to be a frozen car, but which one? Kip Stevens could be John McCutcheon. So it's either going to be a BSR from the Renault race winner or a BSR TC champ. Plus off the back of winning a Mazda MX-5 championship as well. Eight. Right, well we have effectively got a full reverse grid, 25. Yeah, so that will be John McCutchinson. It was going to be very likely that it would be him, but um, and that's been proven now. So, uh, 15th place is the charm for him. So, we will see you back for the final race of the evening in just a few moments' time here on Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live as the BSR Formula Renault Series continues.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
the final time this evening you join us at the Suzuka International Racing Course in Japan with the BSR Formula Renault Series here on Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live, Andrew Woodhouse, Alex Simpson and Adam Bath joining you for round four of the evening and um, Adam, it's not been a bad meeting tonight really all told. No, it hasn't. The first race was a bit underwhelming but uh, I think we've definitely made up for it in race two and race three and uh, we'll see what happens in race four. We've got an all sim race, a uh, pro sim, I should say. We've got an all, all pro sim front row with uh, John McCutcheon and Kip Stevens. We'll see if they can um, set the world alight in this fourth and final race. Because so far today, the main story has been uh, the guys at the back working their way through the field, the likes of Martin Van Lusenord and Samuel Lebert. You can't seem to shut up about these grid sizes, Alex. But what it does give us is, especially even, it's usually just after the first lap. Um, we usually get some really good racing because there's not, you know, there are sort of. There's more space out there, isn't there? Racing's been pretty good tonight, to be fair. You know, we've had, what, one, two, three retirements, you know, in max in the races, actually. Yeah, I think we've had, like, only four retirements in uh, in three rounds. Yeah, it's not too yeah, it's not too bad. Unfortunately, some people Most of them people have been, yeah, got, yeah, got involved in, 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 in you know, the yeah. first three, so... But um, yeah, actually, it's been um, it's been pretty good meeting. It's been pretty clean, pretty fair. You know, a couple of, couple of tiny little things that... That have caused incidents, but nothing really major. There's always going to be a couple, though, isn't there? Oh, exactly. Regardless. There's going to be something in every race, you know. So I don't think, you know, we've never ever seen a a, a, a Kia race, have we? Go incident free, you know. And this so. is the problem with the racing fans in general. A lot of the time is a lot of them moan when there's uh, too many collisions, and a lot of them then moan when there's none. So a lot of that in between thing that you want to see a, 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 an exciting race you want to see drivers going wheel to wheel Adam because that in the end is what we're what we're here for well it's all about isn't it really you've got to uh, make those overtakes and go for those uh, go for those positions otherwise that and said you're not really a racing driver so and uh, as we head down to the grid now Kip Stevens is not going to bother taking to the front row so well yeah well, Verk is there instead he's the one we're waiting for yeah he's going to be starting at the back yeah he's probably put himself there so here we go all right, John McCutchinson then. He's won a race already in 2017. Can he make it two here at Suzuka? Green, green, green. Green light is on. Decent start by all involved at the front. Jack Keithley's looking very racy. This could be his opportunity to get a really good result. McCutchinson leads, then it's Ververke. Oh, he oh he's got Ververke. He's gone. Couple and of so them he's gone. been joined by Mortensen. Mortensen. Cold out there, tires us, you know. That out of shape. Who was that? There was a third car as well. That's Bullet Bassey. What happened to him? I don't even see what happened to Bullet Bassey. Quickly catch what happened to Jim while you are you guys are keeping an eye on the action. On the inside, did he get tagged? Oh, he just lost it and spat himself out to the left as well. So, yeah, three cars out there just um, struggling with the cold tyres. Gentlemen, Thompson, Van Lusenor, Baker and Wright. Lost Adam just right for a second the... there. Oh, Can you see that, Alex? That is there? close. That is close through there at the minute. Yep. And, um... Oh, and now the Bears really flying oh. on the inside of Godfrey into the hairpin. And, and it looks like that Thompson's going to do it as well. Yeah, and some problems for George there with his connection. Yeah. Somehow he manages to um, survive. But... Van Lusen or Thompson and Godfrey very close to each other. Heathley's managed to take the lead, actually, with all that going on. Didn't see it on our screen. Problems for McHutchinson, very slow on the inside. Yeah, he, he, I think he got some of the grass, possibly on the inside of the corner. Pack just comes flying by him. Adam joins us once again. Apologies, yeah, the internet could be dropped, but back again. He got back quickly as um, Denton now up into... Oh, he was. Oh dear, over oh, the corner oh. he goes, and jo Jos Honig now up in second place. The Bear the also getting past... Spot. One, two, three. Paul Denton and Samuel LeBaer. Denton's dropping down the order like a stone. Is that the slowdown penalty? That is, and uh, first lap one as well, so always the worst, but I think he's managed to get it served there. LeBaer looking on um, Tom Depka, so round the outside into uh, turn one. Sweeps around for the second part of that apex as well. Lovely overtake. One position's not, gained already. I'm losing all through on roads as well, up into uh, P7. Next up him is the Prosim car of 
uh, John McCutchinson then, who's down five positions after starting on the pole position. Yep, uh, Jack Keith is away at the front, by the way. It's already going to be difficult for anyone to catch him. Oh, uh, Baxter. Baxter's got a sword. Oh, and in the gravel is McCutchinson. Oh. Bit of mare, really, hasn't he? What happened there? That's off very early into the Dunlop curve, isn't it? So, oh, he got on the gravel. That's what it was. Oh man, he got into the gravel. He hits the wall hard there. Uh, Kimi Räikkönen really? and Sean Lacey had a big, big one there a few years ago. Was that ago. there? Was it? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I remember there was one at the final chicane, wasn't there? Was that? Was that there? Might have been some Montoya. Ah, there was one. At, I remember there was a big crash at the final chicane, and I think it was a Jordan involved. So it was probably a Lacey, but see what happened there. But um, Onig now to defend from Samuel Lebert. We'll, we'll fact check that one after. <laughs> As um, yeah, Lebert. Lebert's looking really good. This is probably the best we've seen Lebert drive all season, Alex. I reckon. Yeah, he's been very, very quick tonight. Um, uh, and Sam he always well seems to well. get caught up in something as well, but you know, he's had some good oh, races, as that was very, very close. Oni just on the inside curb there and drifted out, and I thought <laughs> I was going to do a, one of my absolute pristine curses there. That would have been a wonderful commentator's curse, oh. wouldn't it? Good That's move an by, interesting uh, line from Martin. <laughs> good move by Thompson as well. Well, Honig's got a slowdown penalty. Well, I didn't see even what happened with uh, Van Dusen. He's up to third place. Yeah, okay, Martin had to make a move on Baxter. Go to the right. Oh, this is very close with um, Honig slow down. People yeah. coming up to him. So uh, Godfrey going up the inside. Honig had the slowdown of death as well because he hadn't set up a representative lap time, well, a valid lap time for that matter. So uh, that's why he's dropped down the order. Look who's back in the mix, Chambol Bassett, up into. Um, it, it looks like 10th, yeah. Yeah, he managed to get recovered pretty well from his uh, first lap issue, so he really quickly. on it around on the grass and perhaps lost two or three seconds, and as these guys have been battling, he's able to get back in there. No slouch, we know. Going through on John Godfrey. On the outside of uh, Degna. Oh, one. Godfrey! Not easy, but does well. <laughs> Godfrey's gone. That's Degna 1. That's oh. Degna 1. That's Godfrey. And that was, it was just on the inside there, wasn't he, really? He hit that big curb because um, Jem was there. He just, the thing with that got curb, the switch you just, on. you've got to make sure you don't hit that. That was the same thing that happened to him at Virginia, wasn't it? Um, it yeah. In the oak tree where he, he just, just twitched a little bit. And it, unfortunately, the old, um, like you say, the correction of death almost just sent him off into the... Uh, it just sent him off into the side. Well, he's now got two uh, CQR cars right behind him, Christian Rose and David Baker, who have been working well today. And uh, David Baker can see another sixth place in his sights here. And that's Tom Depka that they're, they're chasing down. Well, Depka half covers the line into 130 yard. Interesting to see what the top three do lap time wise this time. I think Keithley might oh. be too far away. Around the outside. Oh, wow. Wow. Triangle. Oh, nice. Oh, very, very good indeed. Lose well, the news of the season, yeah. They, they sort of boxed each other in, didn't they, the CQR cars there? But now Rose is having a look back on Bolubas, who's lost a bit of momentum. Good slipstream from Rose. Going to fight around the outside, but Chem's just... They've got a bit more commitment in the first corner. Gives me and the costume racing driver up into... Um, Devon. On Lusenod's going to find it tough to do anything about Libert or Keithley, I think, Alex, because Libert has been very quick all meeting. Is it arguably the quickest of the three? Three retirements in this race. George Lee Wright didn't get too far at all. Uh, John McCutcheon, we saw how he ended his race and Andreas Mortensen uh, also out as here comes Cembo Labassi on Tom Depka that's going to be sixth place for the of course uh, the core driver around the outside into the hairpin that's a good move isn't it his overtaking has been pretty good tonight I'll say that Cem been a bit out of position hasn't he with the grids and things Adam and not really been uh, in a great position to fight for the victory apart from the maybe well apart from race three yeah, it seems to be uh, the story of his races today. They've all been working working their way through the field. It was the same with race one as well. He wasn't able to get uh, too close to Martin Van Lusenos on that occasion. He has taken a few victories this season 
uh, Chembard of Bassi when uh, the Grizz were a little bit bigger than this as well. So uh, knows what it's all about. And of course, we covered him in the the Road Pro Series last season. Indeed, and um, we know we know what his capabilities are. And as Alex mentioned earlier on, top ten finishes in the World Championship Series and. Um, well, Bassi definitely a force to be reckoned with. And he's definitely even one for the future as well, because he's still pretty young, isn't he, Alex, I think? Yeah, yeah, got plenty of time to sort of improve and things like that. So, um, yeah, very good driver. You know, it, it, I will say this, though, Alex. Throughout the season, the standard in this series, the midfield drivers have really, really stepped up their pace, haven't they? And, and, and really rose to the occasion with these, driver, with these um, really, really fast drivers at the front of the field. Uh, sorry, just dealing with an issue on the chat there as well. Okay. So, um, maybe, you Adam, you can, maybe you can answer that one instead. What was the question? <laughs> you were, nobody was listening. I'm going! Uh, no, I'm only kidding. Uh, so, no, I was saying the midfield drivers in this league have definitely raised the game. Um, being on the track week in with that week out with such fantastic drivers. Baxter into the wall hard. He takes out. Oh, he hits Depka, but I think Depka has survived it. Oh yeah, with minor damage. I think he should be okay after that. But yeah, um, yeah. Back to your point about the midfield drivers. Yeah, they definitely, they've definitely brought it this season. I think they've had to as well because the likes of Van Lusen or Samuel LeBer and Jack Keithley, they always would be running away with it, and uh, they're making sure that uh, they're getting some good racing as a result. Alex, we've often said, haven't we, that um, there's no substitute for racing with world-class drivers, is there? It just helps you, you know, push, you know, looking at a time, you want to get closer to them and stuff like that. So, you know, when you're racing guys faster, the, that gives you something to go after. You know, if you're racing people who are, you know, you're quicker than week in, week out, there's nothing to sort of challenge you, is it, to go that, that yeah. bit faster? That, that's, that's spot on. And um, well, who's going very fast at the minute is um, Jack Keithley, because he's leading by 4.4 seconds. The gap is coming down, but... Those two guys behind Samuel Lebert, Martin Van Luzno, they don't really have the, uh, the time. But who's that? There's a... Oh, Paul Bassi was almost on the grass down the straight. Yeah, three laps to go. Will um, Martin get to um, Lebert? I'm not sure he will. These guys look very, very similar on pace. They're both half a second quicker than Keithley, but like I said at the start of this race, once he got built up that sort of four or five second lead, I felt that he was quite comfortable. Baker just needs two places, doesn't he? Come on, Baker. So if he gets his teammate again, and if he gets Depka... He's got to finish at least inside the top six in every <laughs> race. No pressure there. Not always easy to do in this league, I must admit, but Baker seems to have done a pretty good job with it throughout the season. And um, CQR, in fact, uh, they've, lost, they've lost a couple of drivers throughout the season, but Christian Rose, David Baker, they've really stuck with it, and they've, um, they've been pretty impressive at it. Definitely, yeah, they, of course, as uh, Martin Van Nusen will take second place off Samuel LeBaire, by the way. Yeah, they've worked well as a team, really, Christian Rose oh, and is David he? Baker. What happened to LeBaire? What happened to LeBaire? Because Van Nusen was not catching uh, at such a he rate. He just locked up in the hairpin, got oh. himself out of shea. And then went off on the exit. And then went off on the exit, yeah. Oh, he got a twitch on as well, didn't he? Yeah, that's what pushed him onto the grass. I think he'd have been okay without that. Yeah, because it was just a big lock-up. Van Lusen will say thank you very much, son. I love that. Daniel Lebert down to third place. Still on the podium, of course, but not quite where he wanted. Well, look, Bassi is catching Thompson at about three quarters of a second a lap as well. So, Adam, that could be quite the interesting battle in the last two laps. Yeah, and we haven't got too long left, have we? Yeah, Baker. Baker. David Baker going for that sixth places, and he gets a good run on the Exus boom curve. Depka's made a mistake in the chicane, and Christian Rose could be right on him by the end of the straight here. Oh yeah, he's got a fantastic run on the X, hasn't he? Over long we go on to lap 7, here comes David Baker. Tom Depka might just be safe for now. But I don't think Christian Rose is safe from his teammate. Baker going to the outside into the first corner. Baker have any overlap? No, he doesn't. I think he's trying to um, dance around in the, in the mirrors. I'm pretty sure Christian Rose... Well, I definitely know that Christian Rose can, uh, knows he's there. I think Even Baker will give Christian the, the time to try and overtake uh, Depka here, though, rather than get the move on him done. But... If it looks like he's not oh. going to get him, I think they'll they'll swap. Depka's just getting a little bit... This is the point you made, Alex, about the line through this um, through this first sector. It really is. Depka just missed one corner. 
effectively it's just slowed him down a little bit for the rest oh, of it. Oh, you're chasing the you're chasing the complex for the rest of it. That's it. You get the first turn wrong, and it's yeah, so frustrating. Degna two is a nice corner. I do enjoy that one. I know Adam said uh, you you don't, but you I'm prefer Degna one, don't you? So always prefer the quicker corners. <laughs> um, that's why you're good at Donington, really. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> very nice, true. Um, here comes Christian Rose, though. Got a great run on Depka. And better straight line speed, it looks like, in that CQR car as well. He overlapped him. Is Depka going to fight him into Spoon? He does. A lock up. Side by side, Rose slides the car a little bit through the first part. Good battle, this. Depka not giving in at all. He's going to have company from David Baker. Baker might inadvertently push uh, Depka past Christian Rose because do get a bit of that aero push. Jim up to fourth as well. Straightforward um, pass there. Hot Brilliant Thompson already. Wow. There was Baker for, uh, for seventh. Inside, Depka oh, misses the no. corner. Oh, I thought that was going to be certain contacts on the second part of the chicane, but somehow it isn't. They're doing very well to avoid it. I'll tell you what, Alex, Depka's doing very well in the championship considering that uh, for a while he was probably the look unluckiest man on eye racing. Yeah, exactly. Actually, I think the you know the field just sort of calming itself down made a big difference to um, Depka. He's able to um, enjoy the racing a little bit more because it must have been really frustrating the first four or five rounds of the season. He seemed to be involved in absolutely everything out there. Yeah, doing a, a good job. Um, doing a good job here, definitely, on this uh, Tuesday evening. Here on Apex Racing TV. More to come from us this week, of course, when I racing live including the British Sim Racing Touring Car Championship on Thursday evening, BSR race night, of course, with the Porsche Cup main event. The Touring Cars, four races there. And, uh, Adam, that season's already been pretty crazy and it's going to get better, I think. Yeah, and on this and this week we're heading to two different race circuits. Uh, the Porsches are going to be off racing at Donington Park, whilst the BSR TC are off at Mategi. So All right. we're going to be going through quite a few different time zones in uh, this that race meeting on Thursday. To Japan doesn't quite work as a support series, does it? If they're not there, anyway, that's another problem for another time, <laughs> isn't it? They need to be at the same track, don't they? That's a bit <laughs> stupid, but never mind. Never mind, everybody. Get the Apex Chopper. Um, oh, mate, yeah, we'll need to get the Apex. Um, time get Apex, out I was to get, get the Apex Teleporter more than anything have to get something. Um, energize as uh, Jack Heathley through the final chicane. Here he comes then, for Faker Simsport, they've taken the lead in the team's championship. And it looks like they're going to extend it here, because Jack Keefley takes the win, and that's fine style from him. Brilliant, yeah. holding back the likes of Nevera and Van Luzenord. And they couldn't get to him in the end, even though Martin Van Luzenord did set a 154-3 on that final lap. Yeah, and um, Chen Bullock Bassi actually got within... He actually got within... Oh, there goes Libert. He got within six tenths of him. Um, two CQR cars rows ahead of Baker. Baker will be gutted with seven. Yeah, that's no good, David. Oh, he'll be devastated there. As um, it overcomes Kip Stevens, good race from him. Like 17th up to 11th. Kip gets a top 10. He said he wanted a top 10 in the uh, it chat, 11th. I think. It looks like. Oh, what? It blew in my timing screen. It was broken. Yosonic's <laughs> in 12th place. Okay. And then Roy, Roy Viverke, who um, has had yeah. damage, unfortunately, all the way yeah. through the race. Nothing worse crashed, than didn't that, he, is the there, lap, lap one. <laughs> Especially when he was on the front row. Best yeah. on the front row, it seems, uh, well, today, anyway. Especially he'll hit John McCutcheons, and it looks like Roy Viverke might have caught a bit of that curse as well. Yes, our TC safest driver of 2016. Nothing safe about that lap one, was there? Um, cold tyres and kaputted. Was uh, okay. He just finished the race though in 13th place. Only for the finishing order then. Jack Keefley takes the win. Martin Van Luzen all second. Third for Samuel LeBert. Fourth, Chen Boyle at Bassi. Fifth, Josh Thompson. Sixth, Christian Rose. Seventh, David Baker. Uh, an awful resort for David, really. Uh, eighth for Tom Depka. Ninth, Paul Denton. And tenth, John Godfrey. Eleventh, Kip Stevens. Twelfth, John Joss Honig. Thirteenth, for Verke. And then the cars uh, that weren't classified. Stephen Baxter, three laps down. Big one on the exit of Degna 2. Andreas Mortensen, I don't think we saw what happened to him. Uh, John McCutcheon. Uh, we ended up in the. He was in the gravel, wasn't he? Sorry. The, uh, with Viverki, wasn't he? Um, yeah, and then he retired a few laps later or yeah. something. Yeah. Must have had a meatball or something. 
Yeah, John McCutcheonson, well, we saw what happened to him. He went off in the Dunlop curve, or maybe just on the exit of the S's, actually. And George Lee Wright uh, didn't get much further than a few corners, really, on the exit of the, the second corner he was he was done for. He was done for. And, uh, well, we're done for as well for the for the evening. Um, Alex, that was a very enjoyable night's racing once more. Yep, thoroughly enjoyed that. Some good racing out there as well. A couple of little accidents here and there, just to spice things up. But, yeah, good... Well, um, you know, uh, a good track, and we knew we were going to have um, some uh, some good races. If you like what you see there, don't forget to um, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube. And as well, if you want to get involved in the action, go over to bsrhub.com. You two can sign up for this series. You can be on the grid next week. And, um, yeah, we'd very much like to have you here. So anybody can do it, be it rookie, be it pro, um, First time to iRacing. Use the a, use a code be it, uh, PR BSRTC. Get three months for the price of one. Maybe you can use that towards um, some of your races in the Formula Renault series. Right then, um, from all of us here at Apex Racing TV, it's good night from Japan and it's good night from the BSR Formula Renault series. We'll see you next time.